Okay, stop. No. Look, listen. He can't talk. Let's just jump straight to fixing that. Maya, please. I know what I'm doing. Dialogue is pretty common in games. They help convey the character's thoughts, emotions, or describe the situation to the player. Usually, they are presented as text at the bottom of the screen, like when you talk to a fellow villager in Animal Crossing in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, when the game is telling me that I'm a Bulbasaur, but I can always switch to a Pikachu. And in Legend Zelda, again, when you can talk to someone, or I mean, when you watch a cutscene, and especially in visual novel games like Phoenix Wright and Professor Layton. And yes, Doki Doki Literature Club as well. There are ways to make dialogue for your games. Oh, sorry Monica, but I'm not going to be using Rempi for this. I'm going to be using Inky to make them, but I'll play your game later. Before I continue this long introduction, let's just go straight to Inky. In order to get Inky, go through Inkle Studio's website and download the right version of Inky from their GitHub page. Once you do that and open it up, you will see the editor. This editor is split in half where we can write our script on the left, let's say, hello player, and see it say that over here. The right side shows the result of our script live, so we can test it out as we make our dialogue. How are you doing today? So at this point, we reached a question, and sometimes the player can make a choice at this point. In order to make choices here, there are a few ways to do it depending on the type of choice that you want to make. Start off with the multiplication symbol, or the star, then write out the option. One for good, one for bad, and what for repeat. On the right, you can see the options display as a list grayed out and centered. If I pick one, it repeats what the option says and that's it. That's the end of the story. Well, we can do more than just that. We can make branches with the help of knots. They will help us group content together, very similar to writing a function in C Sharp, and it can be useful for branching from the choices we make. The syntax for making one is to have at least two equal signs on the left and right side of the knot's name. And we can make one for each responses as well. Good, bad, and repeat. The options may disappear, and there may be yellow or red lines going on here, but we're not done yet with branching. The symbol for jumping or branching into these knots is making the arrow sign looking operator like this, with the hyphen and the greater than symbol next to the options. Then I'm going to go ahead and write something for the responses like for good, I'm doing good, thank you game, and then there's a special um, knot called N which pretty much ends the story so, so I'm going to branch off from here to the end of the story. And for bad, eh, not so well, and then maybe the game could say, oh sorry to hear that, hope things get better, and remember that you will always be my favorite player. How do you feel now? Then have it branch back up to the choices above. And then for repeat, the game might say, oh, maybe you didn't hear me well. I asked, how are you doing today? Then have it branch back up to the choices again. And then don't forget to branch to the choices knot at the top underneath the question so we can see them again on the right side. And let's reset the story. I say what, plays it out, and we're back to the original question, but the what option is gone. If I pick bad, it will say bad, eh, not so well, which sounds a bit weird. It adds our option to the beginning of the response, and we are left with one option, which is good. Well, not a good thing, but I meant like the option good. So there are no other choices here. When we made the choices, there are a few types of them. The multiplication symbol, or the star, makes it a one-time option. Changing it to a plus sign will make it not disappear, so we can say what multiple times. As for the part where the option gets appended to the response, we can wrap our options in square brackets to suppress them. 
So if I go to bad, it doesn't say bad. Eh, now it looks better. With what we just went through here, I think we can make another dialog for Phoenix Wright and have it in the Unity project. If you want to learn more inky stuff, check out the documentation. Conveniently, there is an option to open it up right here under the help tab. From here, let's combine Inky and Unity together by making a small script for the project. I already went ahead and set up a Unity project and wrote out a small script for Mr. Wright to respond to the judge. Usually in the beginning of the trial in the Ace Attorney games, the judge asks if the defense and the prosecutor are ready. Then Phoenix Wright over here has the option to say whether he is or isn't ready. I haven't mentioned this before, but the grayed out text above the dialog lines are called tags. They are similar to a comment in a programming language, but the plot twist is that Inky knows that they exist and can read them. You will see later in the code that I take advantage of it and turn this particular line to blue. All right, a way to get the script into the Unity project, I just export it as a JSON file and import that into the assets folder. A little speedrunner's rundown of the project. Phoenix here has three animations on standby and will play them when it's their time. The canvas is consisted of a text box sprite texts and a panel for the options and there is a dialog manager object that will take care of the text box and essentially be the director of this scene before cross-examining the dialog manager script we need to import ink unity integration from the asset store this will help ink and unity to work together and allow us to access their collection of classes for our code with all that Let's begin our script's cross-examination. To access the ink-related classes, you would need using ink.runtime. And down here, I just have some variables that I created to get the reference to the ink file and the UI elements that I mentioned earlier, such as the text box, option panel, and the prefab button that it will populate the panel with later. The story is the contents from the ink file that I just made for this project, and choice selected is the choice that the player decided to go with. In start, I created the new story with the imported ink file, and then grabbed some text box components and initialized some variables here. In update, we check to see if there is still more to the story and that it hasn't reached the end yet, with the dot can continue property. If so, advance through the ink file. Otherwise, the end of the story. Unity and Ink live happily ever after. But we're not done yet with this dialog manager script yet. In the advanced dialog, we can grab the next line in the story with the continue method. So it's always good to check to see if the story can continue before, well, continuing the story. Next up is parse tags. So jumping down to that function, I take advantage of the tags that are currently present at this point in the story. The way I have it, I have like the verb and then like the value next to it in the tags. So I extract the info from the tag and the value next to it. Then I use a switch statement to figure out what it is and set its value. For example, if Phoenix Wright needs to think while saying something, the tag can be anim2, if I remember that correctly, <laughs> above the line that he would say in the ink file. But about this whole section, it's totally up to you on how you would like to go about controlling the actors and this dialogue script. It doesn't have to be exactly like this, just thought it could give you an idea or maybe you know a better way of doing this. And maybe you don't have to use tags at all. Another way you can just do it is maybe say like have the sentence begin with the actor's name, probably put like a colon or a symbol to indicate like that's the actor's name and, and the stuff afterwards is what they say. Or maybe you do take advantage of tags for something. It's to again, it's totally up to you. Heading back to the advanced dialog, the next step would be actually typing out the line in type sentence. Either now or before, you may recognize these functions names, advanced dialog, and type sentence from somewhere, and if you thought about brackies, then you will be correct. This script has a structure or flow to be like the one from his dialog system video. I'll have a link in the description and on the video if you'd like to learn more about setting up your own dialog system. 
So in type sentence, it types out the sentence letter by letter. In the end, I check to see if the character is talking, then stop. The only character that's active is Phoenix Wright. So it, it seems a little bit hard coded, but it's okay for now. <laughs> we reached the end of the sentence or well, we reached the end of the function at that point. Lastly, after all that, if there are any choices that need to be made, then let's show them to the player by accessing the story's current choices with the dot current choices property. I'm creating the buttons dynamically depending on how many choices there are. In this case, there are two, yes or no. This part of creating game objects dynamically can be a little crazy because along with creating the buttons, I added in a variable and a function to each of these buttons. The element represents the choice itself. And if the player clicks on the button, it will call the set decision function down below. In that function, we get the choice from the button and grab its index. The index is important because we need that for the story's choose choice index function. It will tell the story where to branch off to depending on the choice made. Afterwards, it will turn off the option panel, destroy the buttons, and advances the dialogue. Lastly, again, if there isn't more to the story, then we have reached the end of it. And that concludes this script's cross-examination. Hooray! With all that, Phoenix Wright can talk again and he can get ready. Maya is relieved and happy. They, they continue with the trial and they live happily ever after. Well, after the case. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to cross-examine the whole project yourself, I will have it up on GitHub. Yes, GitHub, because I finally got better at version controlling outside of Unity. Hooray! Emphasis on finally. If you have any holdits or objections, please comment them down below. And don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this. And like always, until then, I will see you in the next level. Bye!